for them. Take your Bibles uh, quickly today. Go to 2 Kings chapter 3. 2 Kings chapter 3. I'm going to go quickly today. We're a little bit later, of course, than normal, but for a good reason. And uh, I'm going to abbreviate our Bible reading. I want to just point out a couple of verses to you. And let's do this. If you're able, let's stand together just as I read the Word of God. If you'll stand in respect to the reading of God's Word, I would appreciate that. If you're able to stand, 2 Kings chapter 3. 2 Kings chapter number 3. And I'm going to begin reading with verse 15. And I'll read through the 20th verse. You can just follow with me. After I read the scripture, I'll pray and you can be seated. Verse 15 of 2 Kings 3. The Bible says, But now bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass when the minstrel played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, Make this valley full of ditches. For thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not see wind, neither shall ye see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled with water, that ye may drink both ye and your cattle and your beast. And this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moabites also into your hand. And ye shall smite every fence city and every choice city, and shall fell every good tree, and stop all wells of water, and mar every good piece of land with stones. Verse 20, And it came to pass in the morning, when the meat offering was offered, that, behold, there came water by the way of Edom, and the country was filled with water. And let's pray today. Father, thank you. This great story and a great truth today. Thank you for the uh, presentation of the Trumps. And I, I pray that, as we prayed earlier, that, Lord, you would even... Uh, now begin to prepare a, a people for them that would love them and rally around their vision to reach the Stuttgart, uh, the city of Stuttgart and the area around it for the cause of Christ. Uh, Lord, do great works through them, I pray. And we're, we're grateful for them and excited about their future ministry. Father, help us to settle in now. We thank you for the time that we set aside for the preaching of the Word of God. And Lord, I ask and pray that you would guide me and lead me and help me to just be a blessing and a help to your people today. That's all I want. So, Lord, I yield myself to you, and I hope and pray that each listener would be yielded as well. Speak thou to our hearts today. Help us to be better Christians, to love you and serve you better because of our message today. Bless now the preaching of the Word of God. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Stay focused and alert. I want to help you today. And again, I, I will not be long at all. We'll get out of here at our regular time. I promise you that. Second Kings chapter 3, there are three kings traveling together. And I'm making a very long story short. They're pursuing after the enemy. And we have the king of Israel, the king of Judah, and the king of Edom. They're traveling together, of course, with their armies. And uh, several days journey, they run out of water. There's no water uh, in the land. No rain has fallen. They uh, uh, inquire for a prophet of God to come, and Elisha is that prophet of the day. And they bring Elisha, and Elisha uh, is given some instruction by God. And I want you to look again at that instruction that, that God tells Elisha to tell these men uh, to do in order that they might uh, get some water. If you look at verse 16 there again of chapter 3, if you still have your Bibles open, and... Uh, we see here the instruction from God. He said, Thus saith the Lord, Make this valley full of ditches. Verse 17, he says, For thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not see wind, neither shall ye see rain, yet that valley shall be filled with water, that ye may drink both ye and your cattle and your beasts. So we see uh, many people here without water, and God said, Again, I, I'm going to provide that water for you, but I, I'm not going to cause a storm to blow in. You're not going to feel the wind. You're not going to... Uh, see a, a rainstorm, that's not the way that I'm going to give you what you need, and you need the water, but, but you're not going to see it by conventional methods. He said, what I want you to do is take your men, take the armies that you have with you, and dig ditches, and I will provide, as you dig the ditches, the water uh, to fill these ditches. Again, it won't be by a storm, it won't, won't be the way that you think it should be. But I will give you uh, what you need. So God's instruction was for the, the ditches uh, to be dug. Uh, God's promise again there was in verse 17 that, that uh, he said that the valley shall be filled with water that you may drink both ye and your cattle uh, and your beasts. We see down in verse 20 God's provision. And uh, we see the fulfillment of God's promise. It says, it, and it came to pass in the morning when the meat offering was offered 
that behold, there came water by the way of Edom, and the country was filled with water. So the ditches were dug. The people obeyed God. God miraculously filled these ditches with water. Again, not by the conventional means, by the way that we might think that the rain would have come, or the, the water would have come by the rainfall. God said, I'm not going to do it that way. You do what I tell you to do. I'll fill uh, the ditches in the morning. God came through. Uh, it was such. Literally, the, the Moabite army came out to the uh, uh, a scene that day. When they looked at the valley, uh, the, the sun was coming up in the morning. That water looked to them uh, as blood. And they literally thought that these three kings that were traveling together to come fight them had turned on one another and that they slaughtered one another as they looked in the valley, seeing it as a valley filled with blood. So the enemy army, the Moabites, come down to that valley thinking they've already, you know, the, those pursuing after us, they've already killed one another, which was not the case. And uh, these three kings and their armies, of course, rose up and there was a great slaughter there uh, of the Moabites that day. Now that's not the message, but if you read further on in the chapter, you see that. So God provided them what they needed, the water for them to drink and to sustain their life, that they could fight in the battle. But it was a second blessing literally that they got as the Moabites saw that water as blood, thinking their, their pursuers had killed themselves already. And uh, again, that was not the case as they rode in literally to an ambush and were slaughtered. Uh, now, all that to say this, God can bring water any way he wants to bring water. Uh, God was saying here in this great story that he didn't need a rainstorm to provide the water that these people needed. God's ways are much higher than our ways. We often look at our situation as hopeless, or we look at our situation from a human and a, a very logical perspective, and it seems hopeless to us. Reminded here in the story that God doesn't need our logic. And God doesn't need uh, our opinion on how something should be done. We often pray, I think, and even are guilty of this. We maybe believe that God can, but we have in our minds how we think God's going to do it. And when we don't see God coming through the way that we think he should, or maybe in our own uh, you know, uh, minds are very minuscule, that, that we, 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 we doubt that he is going to come through because... He's not doing it the way that we think he should and the way that the only way perhaps that we think he can. And God is reminding us here. He says, listen, if I want to give you water, I, I don't need to uh, bring a, a wind that, that brings in a storm that brings rainfall. I can give you water any way I want to give you water. I can do anything any way I want to do it. And again, sometimes we look at our situation very logically and we don't see any way out. We don't see any hope. Maybe uh, it's a financial situation day for you. And, and you don't see how God's going to do it. Or you think this is the way he should be doing it. And it's not happening. You're looking for the clouds uh, of rain. A, 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 a rainfall of financial blessings. And God said, I can do that. Yeah, I can do it the logical way. And sometimes I, I do it that way. But God said, I don't need to do it that way. Sometimes God says, hey, you dig the ditch. And I'll give you the blessing. We're looking for the, the storm clouds to come in and provide the rainfall the way we think the water should come. God says, no, I'm going to give you a very unconventional way. I just want you to prepare for the blessing. See, the problem is not that God is not a, a blessing giving God. The problem often in our life is we do not prepare ourselves to receive the blessings of God. We're looking for the clouds to come. God said, that's not the way I'm going to do it this time. I want you to prepare. Dig the ditches. And God said, I'll bring the blessing. Our job is to do the ditch digging. God jo God's job is to do the filling after we dig the ditches. If someone needs water, God could provide rain if he wanted to do so. He could say to dig some ditches and to wait, and he will fill the ditches with water without any rain at all. The Bible says, Jesus said, spoke these words, with men this is impossible, but with God all things. Are possible. Second Kings 3.18, the Bible says there in that great verse, and this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moabites also under your hand. I'll give you a very practical message here in just a moment. Again, I'll go quickly, but God's job is to provide the blessings. Listen today, this, this is the truth. Our job is to dig the ditches. Digging the ditches represents being prepared to receive the blessings of God. 
Uh, again, the problem is not that God is not in the blessing business. The problem is that we often do not put ourselves in the position to receive His blessings. And I'm going to give you a message today that's just taken from our text, Make This Valley Full of Ditches. Another uh, title could be today, uh, We Are to Dig the Ditches. Christian, you are to be the ditch digger, if you will, in this relationship. Let me give you several of those ditches, if you will, that prepare us to receive the blessings of God. Number one today, the, the ditch of obedience. Obedience. Simple message today. God said, I want you to dig the ditch of obedience. What happens, God, when I obey you? God says, I will bless you. So many of God's people today want, uh, we're like a King Saul from uh, uh, 2 Samuel 15, or 1 Samuel 15, rather, and, and, and we want to disobey God, and yet when the prophet shows up, we want to go to the prophet as Saul went to Samuel and said, I know I messed up, I know I made a mistake, but go to God and get God's favor back on my life. In other words, God, I, I know I've sinned against you, but bless me anyways. Folks, let us never forget that the key to get everything that God has for us is the key of obedience. So God's not blessing me. Have you dug the ditch uh, of obedience today? God is a blessing God. God is no respecter of persons. Uh, he doesn't bless preachers above any other Christian. He doesn't bless the person, uh, want to bless the person next to you uh, any more than he wants to bless you. Uh, he blesses those who put themselves in the position to receive the blessings. And one of the great ditches, if you will, of the Christian life is the ditch of obedience. Not giving you anything earth shattering today. I'm just trying to help you put yourself in a, bless, a position where God can bless you. Sometimes we go and say, you know, we want the pastor to pray for us. And, and I want you to come and let me pray for you. I get a lot of people throughout the course of the week. People call our church that never uh, even uh, will dream of coming here. But they want a church or a pastor to pray for them. Why? They want the blessings of God. Uh, Got bad news for those folks. They're not willing to dig the ditches. So they are not putting themselves in a position to receive the blessings of God. I was talking to a dear lady here in our community just a couple weeks ago when I was out sowing. And she said, Pastor, please pray for my son. He's a drug addict. Pray for him. And pray for my family. I want God to bless our family. And I invited her to church. She had no business to ever come to church. And I said, let me just pray for you right now. I guarantee you I didn't, give, I didn't offer the prayer to God that she was expecting me to offer. I prayed that God help this lady to realize how much she needs you in her life, help her to obey you and trust you and help her to get her family into church that you may bless them, God. I'm not going to bless, you know, just, God, just deliver her son from uh, addiction and bless this lady as she doesn't give a lick about living for you at all. I'm not going to pray that. That's a misuse of prayer. I pray God help her to dig the ditch so that you can fill it. And the ditch of obedience is a key ditch that we must dig. And, and many things under that, uh, you know, giving. Brother Bob's sitting right here on our second row, and he tells me all the time and, and uh, reminds me, and I, I know it's true, that you cannot outgive God. Uh, and, and he said, boy, I, 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 Pastor, I, I want to put my name in for that blessing box that you have out there. We might put you on the list, but let me tell you how you get a blessing right now. Uh, put a few bucks in there. You're never going to outgive God. And again, we, we, don't, we don't have our ditch filled because we don't dig it. And because we don't dig it, God said, I, I want to bless you. And, and you're not putting yourself in the possession, uh, position to receive those blessings. John Rice, the great evangelist now up in heaven, used to tell of a reoccurring dream that he had. And he said, uh, I, I would often dream this dream that I died and went to heaven. And when I got to heaven, I, I met Jesus. And Jesus said, John, I want to take you all around heaven. He says he took me, uh, would take me into a very large warehouse. And uh, we'd go into this warehouse. He'd, see, he'd say, I, I'd see just the, the walls uh, all the way up to the ceiling lined up with blessing after blessing, some material and spiritual things that were represented there, uh, all filling this great warehouse in heaven. And he said, I would turn to Jesus and say, Jesus, what is all this? And Jesus said, John, those were all the things that I wanted to give you while you're alive, but you never asked me. You never put yourself in a position to get them. And let me just say right now, Christianity is just not about, all about what you get. Okay, let me preface the message a little bit. If I never got anything back from, from God, I would still give anything that I could give to Him. If I never got a blessing from that little box back there because I put a few bucks in that to be a blessing to some other family, I'd still want to be a blessing to some other family. But God is so wonderful and gracious that He does bless people that obey Him. He does bless people that will give. 
And Jesus turned to John Rice and said, These are all the things I wanted to give you, John, but you never put yourself in the position. You never asked me. John Rice said he would wake up in a cold sweat every time he dreamed that dream, and he'd sit up in bed. And he said, I'm going to vow to never get to heaven and have that happen to me. And he wrote the great book, Prayer, Asking and Receiving, and went around this country teaching people how to get the blessings of God on their life. Dr. Jack Howes, who I, I served under for six and a half years, as he's my pastor, used to say, he said, I've learned two things in Christianity. A long time ago, I learned how to get things from God. He said, the second thing I learned was how not to keep those things when I got them. And he said, the reason that I, ha I, 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 I get the first thing, uh, which is the things from God, is because I have the second thing, I don't hang on to them when I get them. And you know that man, his ministry, my wife and I are very privileged to be under his pastorate for several years. He was a man that got a lot for, from God, but it was like a, a, a conduit as it came to him, it went through him and to other people. And he did not die a wealthy man at all, although millions and millions of dollars were pumped through his ministry. He gave it away as quickly as he got it. And uh, thousands of stories that people don't even know about. Uh, obedience is the key to everything that God has. Uh, those men, those armies that day would not have had the water come had they not dug the ditch. The problem is not with God. It's the problem that we don't want to do the digging. And I'm, I'm hurrying today for sake of time. But the, 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 the ditch of obedience. Let me say number two, the ditch of faithfulness. You want to be blessed by God, be faithful. A faithful man, Proverbs 28, 20, shall abound with blessings. Uh, too many of God's people, again, are missing out on God's blessings because they simply don't show up where they're supposed to show up. I wonder how many times God has a blessing for us at church and we, you know, we're not here to receive it. I pray every Sunday morning, every Wednesday night, every time before I come to church, uh, I, I ask God to bless us. I don't know who all is going to be here. I know who, many of you are, but I don't know everybody that's going to come. But I say, God, uh, bless us today. I, I want to live in such a way that you bless me. That doesn't mean just God giving me money. I want God to give me spiritual blessings today by being in church. But I remind God, again, God, if people don't come, they can't be blessed. So help people to come today. I, got, I don't get up real early on Sunday morning. My wife gets up very early on Sunday morning. Four o'clock in the morning, my wife's up. She does all the praying. I get to sleep in. Amen? What a great wife. Uh, but I, 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 I usually, I, I'm awake when she gets up out of bed, but I, I stay in bed and I pray and sleep and drool and pray and sleep and drool, and then I get up a couple hours later. But I pray every morning very early, I think before most of you get up, that the Holy Spirit would come and wake you up and uh, settle in your heart that you need to be in church today and lead you here. Why? Not just because I want a big attendance. I want God to bless you. You don't show up. He can't give you what He has for you. Uh, you didn't dig the ditch. The ditch of faithfulness. That's why you know I, I want to come to church every time the doors are open. I, I believe that we need a lot of services in our life because... One of the key secrets to being a good Christian is just a, a lot of, it's like driving down the road. You make a lot of small adjustments all the time. That's what Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, it's a lot of minor adjustments that keep you straight down the highway. Uh, but I also know this from being a Christian, that, that although we need a lot of things continually thrown at us to keep us, you know, uh, so, you know we're not swerving off the road and going off the cliff. It's a lot easier to keep straight down the road than to go off the cliff and then have to get pulled back up by, you know, the tow truck of the Christian life to get us back where we need to be again. It's easier just to, you know, be faithful in church and get all those minor adjustments to keep you straight. But I also know that one great way that God works is just little insignificant events every once in a while that change our lives. It's that one, although we need a lot of services, it's going to be that one service somewhere down the road, something that's spoken from the pulpit, a missionary that comes, that God uses to stir your heart, uh, some little line that's spoken, a song that's sung, and, and a line jumps out at you. And it's going to be that one little moment in time that changes your life forever. But not if you weren't here to get it. You say, well, God will give it to me another service. You don't know that. Uh, God said, dig the ditches. The blessing was coming in the morning. The ditches weren't dug. dug you missed it. Uh, the ditch of faithfulness. Let me say thirdly, the ditch of holiness. We don't hear much on holiness anymore in our churches. 
I don't have time to take you to 2 Corinthians chapter 6 with the great verses on biblical separation. We don't hear much preaching on separation, that we're to be different from the world. I mentioned to my Sunday school class this morning that I got saved out of the world. I don't want to live there any longer. I don't want to love this present world. I want to love the worldly arrangements of this world. Some of us in this room might be missing out on the blessings of God just because we're unwilling to get our music right with God. Is a, is a worldly song more important to you? Is Lady Gaga's latest song more important to you than receiving the blessings of God? And don't get me wrong, God will love you no matter what you do, but God will not bless you no matter what you do. God blesses ditch diggers obedience ditch, faithfulness ditch, holiness ditch. And, and, and uh, I want to, again, separate from the world and, 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 and be the type of Christian that God wants me to be, not to impress anybody, and again, not just to get the blessings of God, but God's commanded me to do that. But when I do that, He blesses me. God doesn't bless worldly, carnal Christians. God looks at our lives and says, do you care more about me than you care about holding on to that music that you should not be holding on to any longer? Do you care more about me than that program that you should not be watching? Or that, that internet page that you visit frequently? And again, you can go ahead and do that. God loves you. Wonderful. But you've not dug the ditch of blessings, the ditch of holiness today. And maybe a lot of blessings that we miss out on is simply because we're not willing to give up something that the world has that we shouldn't be holding on to. But it's become more precious to us than the things of God. And nothing should be more precious to us than Him. Into what He might want to give us because we live holy lives. Number four, the blessing or the ditch rather of service. The ditch of Christian service. Far too many Christians are unwilling to inconvenience themselves and change their schedules to serve God because they think they're going to miss out on something. Well, Pastor, I can't go so in on Saturday. That's my day off. Well, what are you missing out on because you won't take two hours out of your Saturday, an hour? I see some great soul winners in this room, Brother Javier, you know that God's blessed you over and over again. Just the blessings of going soul winning, hundreds of thousands of people that you've led to Christ. Again, I'm not talking about just God giving you some money. I do believe that God will bless you. Let me say this in the, the short history of this church here. There's been many times where I've looked at our books and I said, God, how are we going to make it this month? How are we going to pay our rent? How are we going to meet our obligations? And I had two choices, sit in my office and worry about it. God said, why don't you go out and go soul winning? Why don't you go knock on some doors? And over and over again, I'll tell you what, we could, I've, I've kept very accurate records of this ministry from Sunday number one. I've got every offering, every attendance, uh, every person that's gotten saved, baptized. I've got all the statistics in my office. I can look at uh, our church history and see every time our offerings were down, one thing that we've always kept up was our soul winning. And I know you and we know one another here and ain't nobody wealthy in this room today. If you are, you haven't told us about it, and your tithe record doesn't reflect it, <laughs> but uh, uh, we're just humble people trying to make it a, a, a decent living, and, and I look out, and I say, God, how are we going to make it? And God says, why don't you just keep serving me? And God's been so faithful. Oh, we've seen our attendance down, but soul winning up. We've seen our giving down, but our soul winning up. And I stand before you today uh, as your pastor. We don't have a debt that we owe anybody. Uh, we're not in debt to anybody. If I was to drop off the scene, the next pastor would come in here, he had a, a debt-free ministry. We've got all our bills paid. Uh, now, let me just say this. It's not always because of what's given in this offering. But God blesses a church that digs ditches. God blesses a Christian that digs ditches. I think too many of us, we're not willing to change our schedule and give up our days off to serve God because of what we think we're going to miss out on, and yet we're missing out on all the blessings that God would give us if we would serve Him. Uh, I, 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 I don't want to work in the nursery because I, I want to be out here in the service. Yeah, all the ladies that work in the nursery want to do that, but, but those ladies get blessed when they work in that nursery in there. And God blesses people that serve Him. I don't want to take part of my Saturday and go out soul winning. That's my day. What are you missing out on then because you've not dug the ditch of Christian service? God wants to bless you today, but you've got to dig the ditch. Can I say number five today? The ditch of belief and faith. Jesus said, Matthew 9, 29, according to your faith, be it unto you. 
God came to Elisha and said, Elisha, tell those men to dig ditches. They're not, they're not going to see a storm blow and they're not going to see rain, but if they'll dig ditches, I'll provide the water. What an what a unusual command. Those men had to believe that by faith we dig the ditches, God will fill them. That's exactly what happened. He said, I, I just don't believe that. You've, you've, you've already uh, disassociated yourself from receiving the blessings. According to your faith, be it unto you. I believe if I dig the ditch, God can fill it. I believe today that if I do what God said to do, He'll bless me. I believe today if I show up, I'm going to get a blessing of God. There's never been a church service that I've been in where I've not been blessed. There's been a many a times where I didn't feel like coming to church or going to a conference. And, and my flesh and the world and maybe the devil himself tried everything to keep me away. And I went and I sat there and my life was changed. And I got in my car in the parking lot on the way out and said, God, thank you that I did not stay home tonight. Thank you that I drove the two hours or the three hours or the gas that I needed and I couldn't afford it. Uh, but God, I'm so glad I came. God, what would have happened if I would have missed that message, that truth? Oh, God, thank you that you got me to the church tonight or that conference. Uh, I want to dig the ditch of holiness. I don't want anything to be more important to me than God. Uh, our churches are filled with the the worldly music today and the Christianity today is so worldly in so many of God's people's lives. And I look at that and say, what, what can the world offer you that is better than God? Do, do you honestly think, I mean, young people, that, that Lady Gaga is going to give you something better than God has for you? I don't, I don't know who's popular out there anymore. I'm glad I don't, you know. Still preaching on Michael against Michael Jackson. I found out he died a few years ago. I didn't even know it. You know, uh, you know? when I was in the world as Madonna, she's still out there. God bless her. How old is she now? Ninety-five? I don't know how old she is, but uh, God help that poor lady. But do you honestly think the world has something better than you than God has? Let go and receive the blessings of the Lord. Serve Him. The ditch of serving. You're not going to miss out because you take your time and give it to God. You're going to find out what a wonderful way that is in which to live. I see Brother Paul out there, the years that he's given to this church driving the bus. Uh, some of you, Mrs. Garrett and Mr. Garrett, I remember them going out sewing in with us many years. Mrs. Garrett would go. And then uh, her health prevented her from not going out to walk in the, we'd go to the apartment buildings, Mrs. Garrett, and and after a while, you couldn't go to, up the stairs. And so I'd do the top, you'd do the bottom. But all, you, all the blessings and the stories. I think of the people in our church throughout the years because of you. And you don't get that when you hold on to the world. You don't get that when you say, that's my day. I thought this was the day that the Lord hath made. And that applies to tomorrow also. Because that verse in the Bible doesn't say any specific day of the week. Every day is the Lord's day. Uh, in the ditch of belief. I believe that God can. Uh, I believed in this church's history for 11 years that God could, and he has, and he will. And uh, you got to dig that ditch. And God said, you dig it, I'll fill it. we got a filling God, but we got to be a digging people. And uh, God says today, make this valley full of ditches. I need a blessing, God. God said, are you digging the ditches? Now, to go to heaven, uh, you ain't got to do nothing but come to Jesus and trust Him as your Savior. The ditch of salvation's already been dug for you. It was dug on, the, uh, on Calvary with the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation's already been paid for through the blood of Christ. You can't get to heaven any other way. You can try, pe people are trying to dig a ditch of church membership to get them to heaven. It won't work. Digging a ditch of, of, of living a good life to get to heaven. It won't work because we're all sinners. And God knew that. So he sent his son to die in our place to pay for our sins. The ditch of salvation has been dug by the Lord Jesus Christ. You've just got to believe it and accept it by faith. And you can go to heaven when you die. The other blessings, yeah, God's going to bless us a lot of times where we do nothing at all. But sometimes God says, You've got to dig the trough or the ditch, and then I'll fill it. And we've given you, I think, five of those ditches today. I want you to be blessed so much, church. Uh, I eat, drink, sleep.
pray, uh, it consumes me that, that, that I want God to bless you in your life. And it breaks my heart when I see us perhaps not digging the ditches, which disallow God from doing that. As your pastor, I want God to bless you. I hope that you want it even more than I want it for you. Dig the ditches. Dig the ditches. Would you pray with me? Father, we love you today. God, can you speak to our hearts today? Are there some ditches that are being undug in our lives that are pre preventing us from receiving the blessings of God that we should be receiving? Would it be today, perhaps, Father, a ditch of, of disobedience or a rather a ditch of obedience that's not been dug? And, and so we, we have just a, a plot of ground that is a disobedient plot. What should we be doing that, that we're not, that is preventing us from receiving the blessings that you want to give us. God, could our hearts be sensitive and would our hearts be sensitive enough today to, to pick up on what that is and may today be the day that we surrender and that, that thing that we're keeping from you, that thing that we should be doing that are, and we're not, that, that thing that we're holding on to that needs to be, we need to let go of and may today be the day of surrender. May today be the day that the ditch of obedience or the ditch of faithfulness. I, I wonder how many of us, we're, we're just missing out on something extra that God wants to give us just because we, we miss a service that we could come to, but we just choose not to come. What, what might you be leaving on the table of God's blessings? I don't know. So I just want to be where I'm supposed to be when I'm supposed to be there. Is it a ditch of holiness today that we might need to dig? Or Christian service. So what would God give me if I go soul winning? I don't know, but I know you'll be blessed. I know this, that God will allow you to help people and reach people for Christ. What will God give me back if I take a service or two a month and work in a nursery? I don't know, but I know that God will bless you. It's a wonderful life just to serve God. Christian, are you willing today to dig the ditch of Christian service and a belief and faith? Don't give up today. You're looking for God to do it your way. And God said, I, I could do it that way, but I don't always do it that way. And I don't need to do it that way. I need you to dig a ditch. And God said, I'm going to do it in a way that you never thought I would do it. But you've got to first start the digging. Christian, I hope that you will today. Father, would you bless us? We'll take just a, we're not going to rush the invitation. We're going to take a moment or two and uh, have uh, the altar open. Micaiah will play in just a moment. Maybe one of these five ditches stuck out to you the most today. Would you come to an old-fashioned altar and tell God, God, I'm going to start digging that one again. Maybe you had it dug before and, and the dirt fell back in. And you need to clean it out again today. I don't know, but I want God to bless you. Do you want the blessings of God? in your life. And again, if God never gave back anything, and He always does, I'd still want to do what He just told me to do. Because He loves us very, very much. Father, would you bless, I pray, the invitation. If you're here today and you're not sure that heaven is your home, I ask you in just a moment to come out of your seat, walk an aisle, and come up to this preacher. I want to direct you to somebody in our church that can very lovingly take a Bible and show you from the Word of God. You'll not be embarrassed in any way. They'll very quickly, very lovingly take the Word of God and show you how heaven can be your home. Again, that ditch has already been dug, but you've got to find out what it is, and you've got to simply put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus today as your Savior. Let us take the Bible and direct you how you can be saved today. Whatever you need to do, uh, dear Christian, you come as well. Father, bless, I pray, the invitation today for Jesus' sake. Let's stand together. The altar's open. Would you come?